Hello everyone and welcome to this week's vlog. So it's not the normal one as I explained on last week's because this will be released when I'm in Scotland but I will be recording a Scotland one. You'll all be pleased to know. Um, so this one we're going to do some Q&A's uh, to get to know me a bit better. So I found some Q&A's on the internet um, and it's 20 questions to get to know somebody. I bet I give them a shout out, I googled it and it brought up something called betterhelp.com um, so yeah they had some questions on there which I thought were quite fitting for today um, before I start if anybody wants to know where my headband is from it's from Primark I've got them in various colours and the lipstick is from Ted Baker and the top is H&M um, you know I like if you're on my Instagram I always show where my stuff's from so when is my birthday? I'm a May baby so I'm a Gemini. My birthday's at the end of May. Um, yeah, we're the best star sign. Bit fiery, but we're straightforward. And we're not two-faced. That is completely wrong. It means that we can quickly flit from one mood to the other. So I can be totally chilled and nice. But if basically, if you get on my wick, <laughs> I uh, can just change in an instant. That's it. Not two-faced. We're actually, if you listen to that it's like totally the opposite so what is my favorite animal well tootsie farm so it's a really hard question um so um i have to point that out there can anybody see that lump there if anybody can help me with that lump i've been to the doctors three times and nothing's been done about it and i can't believe that is the first time i've seen that lump so big it moves it's grown and it's now a little bit sore there and I've been three times to the doctors and now with everything going on surely they should look at that I was totally laughed out of the room the first time it came but look how much it's grown they said there isn't even a lump there that's a lump anyway hopefully it's just like some fat tissue stuff but it's definitely it's not like a spot thing where they get them cysts it's like totally different <clears throat> anyway where was I favorite animal dog or is it a horse because I've got a horse but to be honest like dogs or oh, dogs yeah definitely but um chickens like I've really got such a link to birds like wild birds hens ducks you name it you know I've had I've had a pheasant too um but there's just something about them that I find really peaceful and connected to what do I do for a living? No, I'm not in school. That's the second part of it. But I did go... I was Last time I was at uni was 2018, I think. Masters. Um, well, I own, I'm an entrepreneur, so I have my own businesses. Um, but I did work in education. The first time I went to university, I did art and design. So I've kind of gone full circle with that, with um, the home decor, the design and the shop. And I, and I opened the food house, but with everything going on with the, my health, I've kind of reined everything in at the moment. So I'm continuing to do uh, social media and network marketing work. Um, and then I'm going to see what happens with my health as to what I do. Uh, but I will continue to do kind of um, entrepreneur kind of things. Uh, what was my favourite school subject? Oh, probably maths. I do love having to work things out, maths. And ironically, it wasn't art, even though I ended up going on to do art at uni. Um, I did always used to say I wanted to be a sports teacher. And obviously I went on to do teaching at uni as well. But um, I did qualify as a personal fitness trainer. I was a coach for UK Athletics. Uh, like my work experience was at the Leisure Centre. Um, yeah. Do I have a small or big family? Three children? There's six of us that live in the house. Uh, my mum lives here too. Um, and my husband. So, yeah. I'd say big within myself, but probably not big on the larger scale. My sister's got two children. My son, my brother's got two children. Uh, Stuart's family, they've got... He's one of three too. Um, 
it just feels as if we've got older things have shrunk in and the circle's got smaller anyway if my if i was connected to my dad's side properly i mean that family's huge my dad's foreign so <laughs> um what genre of music do i like best do you have favorite song oh i do like i like i'm i don't put myself in one box with my music i love all kinds of music i love biffy clyro Keen De Crow is one of my favourite at the moment. And there's a couple of songs in the charts that are like my favourite. Um, yeah, it depends on my mood as to what I listen to too. You know, if I'm feeling down, you know, I'll listen to these songs that all make me go with the emotion of it and like overthink things. Or if I'm in my car, it might be a bit of hip hop. Um, yeah. How do I spend my free time? Well, how do I spend my free time? I've got, I'm, I am busy and I always have to be busy. Um, I'm always doing, so I'm always cleaning, sorting, clearing out. Um, I like to go on walks. Uh, I like to practice yoga. I meditate a lot. Um, and um, I have some other things which I find personal to me uh, that I do to unwind. I love to read. Um, got books and books and books. The extension that we had designed which is on pause until we finish the other jobs. I'm just leaving that side and as it is, I'm not even gonna put the foundations in. Yeah, um, he's gonna have a back wall of, as a library. Um, so yeah, reading. Um, I, I do like to unwind with a bit of TV. I don't really watch a lot of TV, but like at night, it's like, I feel like I need to put something on and then half watch it. But I do Netflix or something. Um, Travel is my biggest thing. I'm, everybody who knows me knows I'm always like trying to plan a, a trip to get away, a night in Scotland or two. Um, uh, do things with the kids. They're all growing up a bit too much now. I don't really want my time, but I managed to do some felting, as you saw with Athena the other day. Um, cooking. I love cooking. Um, just want my kitchen finished, finally, and then... I'll enjoy it better. <laughs> um, are you a morning or a night person? I don't know. I don't know. I'm like all over the place. So yeah, sometimes I stay up too late, but like recently I've been going to bed around 10ish and then been, as, you, as you'll see that I've been getting up um, in the dark and going for a walk. Um, I'm trying to get myself back into the routine of the 5am and then um, do that. Owen oh, my day, be more productive. Um, so yeah, I, I love mornings. I love hearing the birds in the morning. Um, but then I love sitting on my own at night. I can't switch off till everybody else is switched off. So I hate it if they won't go to sleep. What is my favourite food or meal? It's so hard these days because I've got so many food intolerances. Um, you know, I'm always a person who has to have cooked something slightly different or, you know, there's two meals going on at the table. Um, I do love Italian food. I do love Moroccan food. So I just make my take in a gluten-free uh, version and, and dairy-free. But I'm always happy to please other people with the food, you know. I don't want them to not eat because of me. What's my favourite colour? Mm, love black. Um, I'm obsessed with cobalt blue. And I love fuchsia pink. And white. And red. <laughs> and yellow. <laughs> um, <laughs> a fun fact I know. <laughs> um... Oh, I'm so bad at stuff like this. I'm like so bad at jokes too. I think there's a joke one in here and I'm like, I only know a joke and it's dirty, so I'll not share it. <laughs> and literally somebody says a joke to me and I just sit there and I don't, have to, I don't get it and then they have to explain it. So it makes the joint, uh, joke pointless. Fun fact. I don't know, fun fact about me or a fun fact? Fun fact. Uh, the world is round. Oh, I'm so bad. <laughs> um, favourite movie or TV show? Dirty Dancing. Uh, I love Top Gun. And I watched Top Gun 2 for the first time yesterday. And it was awesome. Um, oh, I loved it. I'm going to watch it again after a while. So I'm packing. 
Uh, Dirty Dancing was my childhood one. Um, I'm, so, I'm an 80s kid. You know, I love 80s films. Total love them. I never, ever bore them. Space Camp, Goonies. Um, oh, Overboard. Just love it. And we're I'm Marvel obsessed. Obsessed. We're all Marvel obsessed. So current day Marvel. Um, favorite memory as a kid. Um, my favorite memories will always go to my grands. And I was such a lucky child in that way at my grands' house. I was lucky with my mum too. But I mean, at my grands, I had this space to just do whatever I wanted and I would go out the back door and she had all this land and you'd not see me till she should go Jill and shout me in for something for my food and I'd do whatever I wanted. I'd be building ponds, gardening. <laughs> um, I had my own big Wendy house up at the top with carpet and electric. <laughs> and, uh, I put my wax jacket on and off I go. I always, one of my favourite films is The Secret Garden and so is the book. But um, I always was like, I'm that girl off the secret garden. That's me, you know. <laughs> um, favourite childhood teacher? It's so weird. Because um, obviously I went into teaching. Um, and actually taught with teachers that taught me. <laughs> so weird. Um, favourite childhood teacher? I don't know if I have one. I actually, nobody jumps out to me, man. That bad? I don't have a favourite childhood teacher. Celebrity crush or your favourite actor or actress? I like Mark Wahlberg. Not as a crush, as an actor. Love Thor. Maybe slight crush. I always used to love Channing Tatum. Um... I don't anymore actually. I'm really bad at not like crushing on people. Is that bad? Like I don't really crush on people. Um Captain America, but he actually looks like Stuart. Mm. Trying to think Denzel Washington is like favourite actor. Oh the dog's crying. Shockeroonie. Do I speak more than one language? Well, I used to live in Portugal for years and I've gone all my life. So I was always quite good at Portuguese. When I've been away a bit, it's like I need to switch myself back on when I get there. French, I can get about just in French. It's like I have to try and... No, don't say Portuguese, say French. Uh, so I love languages, always have. My dad's foreign. My mum always spoke with languages. So yeah, I like to think I, I always make the effort. Um, and I only know a tiny bit of Moroccan, which I find a shame that I wasn't taught it. Uh, but my parents parted when I parted ways when I was seven. Um, so, but seven years, I could have been fluent still. Um, but my dad didn't want us to be, we, you know, dad didn't really like that side of things. He wanted everything to be English, but as now he's, I think, you know, that's a good point is you're made to feel ashamed. Back then, especially, you were made to feel ashamed of being foreign. We had so much racial abuse. Um which is pathetic. I mean, look at look at me. I just get a good tan. Um, and I love, I love it. I love the mix. I love everything that I am. I don't want to be the same as everybody else. This is me, my little story. Um, biggest pet peeve, I'm going to tell you one which is current, is people slagging people off on social media. It is so pathetic. Oh, like... Oh. Right now, there's a couple of people getting it big time. Um, I've just forgotten his name. James Corden. And um, the Prime Minister who's just quit. And um, I didn't really take much notice, as you can see. I um, can't remember a name in this instance. You don't have to say anything like that. They'll already be going through enough thinking stuff. But you wouldn't say it to the face, for starters, most of you. But it's like the way I look, if I just see something on my feed and you're going off on a tangent about people and it's like, like really nasty, insultive names. All right. Yeah, you've done a bad job on that. Or all right, you've just embarrassed yourself in a restaurant or whatever you did. 
But like, let's not go to town on people for their appearance and um, everything about them. You know, whatever happened to be kind? It, it's pathetic. It's one of the biggest things I hate because I like I have to call people out on it. Like you would not say that to their face most of the time. You're coming from under a rock to throw your two bit in and it is shameful. There are people committing suicide left, right and centre, hurting themselves, you know, like how embarrassing she must feel like that she's left Parliament, the her role, and it's like, well, she'll probably not want to leave the house for a bit, like grow up a bit and, and think things through before you speak. It's like... Yeah, pet peeve. It's actually really, really bugging me at the moment. Um, if you've got nothing nice to say, just keep your, your mouth shut, honestly. just It's just not worth it. I would, Once you put something out on social media, it is there forever, yeah? All you need is somebody to screenshot it, and it is there. And those people with Snapchat, and you say, oh, well, I'll know if they've saved it. No, because somebody with another phone can take a photo of it from above. Yeah, so think about that. Anybody younger that's watching... Anyway, back to Smiley Jill. Um, favourite holiday? Oh, what's my favourite holiday? Well, I'm always in Portugal, if I can. I'm always in Scotland. Um, I try to go to places now. So when we drive to Portugal, we... Um, my hand's shaking. Oh, I've got a sore finger. <laughs> when we drive to Portugal we do different routes so that's the excitement even though we're going to Portugal we're trying new places on the way um where did I grow up what country I was born in Billinge in Wigan and I moved um from there when I was five um and I moved to Chorley and I've kind of lived around about there but then I have gone on and I left when I was 19. I moved about to different places in Chorley and the villages and different things. I left when I was 19 and lived in Brussels. I came back to Chorley. Then I went to, try and remember this, went to Portugal. Stayed there a little while. Then I moved to London. Then I went back to Portugal for a holiday. Got with my husband and went back to London, packed all my stuff up and came back. And then um, we moved back to England for a bit. It went back here, round in Lancashire. Then we moved to Cambridgeshire. Then we moved up to Aberdeen. Then we came back to Chorley um, for maybe one to two years, if that. Maybe two years. And then we moved back to Portugal. And then we moved back to Chorley. And we've kind of stayed put and moved four times. But been in this house nearly nine years. Um, so yeah, I've got itchy feet. I've only stayed because of the kids. Um, we've got one life and I want to spend it exploring and even more so with like health stuff going on. Um, what is a skill that I would like to learn? I'd like to do more languages and fully go back, um, to speaking it all the time. Oh, I'd love to learn a skill like um, plastering or something like that, you know, like um, electrics, electrician or something. Joinery, I love that. But like a trade, a trade, I want a trade. You know, I'm, I've done so many courses, so I'm always, I want to keep continue, continuing doing little small courses or whatever till I'm, um, till I pop my clogs. But I always, I always said I'd not finished till I got my PhD and... I was going to continue, but I'm not. Things change. You change. You go with it. So, yeah. What do I value most in a friend or a partner? My friends, I literally put a post yesterday on social media. We cannot, we're busy. We've got kids. We've got lives. We've got work. Um, we've had COVID. Not see each other for months, years. And you just pick up where you left off. I've got quite a few friends like that. And I love it. I totally love it. And I've met some new friends over the last kind of few years, which I value as like really long term friends. Um, and that's what I value in it is that we all understand that um, we all understand that we're busy. We don't take offence by it. It doesn't mean we're not friends. Um, 
What is my biggest irrational fear? I don't think it's quite irrational. Probably one of my biggest fears was, was always tsunamis. Um, I don't really get irrational fears because there's something about me that um, helps me with that. So, yeah. Um, so, I am going to continue till 30 minutes. So there's some more questions. Going back to my birthday stuff, what is the best gift I've ever received for my birthday? Um, what have I ever received? Hmm. My daughter, my daughter and my mum, my mum buys the best gifts ever. Um, I honestly don't know because I don't want to be ungrateful and say to any somebody's is better than none. You know, I'll get a card and I'm grateful. So yeah, I'm, I'm bypassing that. Worst gift is no gift. My husband's quite good at that. Um, has anyone thrown me a surprise party? No. But when we got back from Scotland for my fortieth, my mum and Tia had like put banners and stuff up which was really nice and got me a cake. So then we just went on to have a party, but I've never had a surprise party and I'd love one. Um, what do I, so we're going back to like the work questions. What was my first job? My, well, do you know what? I started working when I was about 12 because my family all had businesses. So um, when I was about 12, I started working for my granddad at the caravans, but my granddad always already slave laboured me before that. <laughs> I'm sleeping at my grand's, but every, I'd have tons of jobs that I needed to do. Um, like, you know, clean all the cars out, polish the brass. Um, oh, what's that outdoor floor cleaner that stinks? Oh, I've gone blank. I'd be like six and she'd have me scrubbing. Oh, it's on the tip of my tongue. Scrubbing all the outdoor patios. <laughs> it was grafters. Everybody was grafters, you know. Uh, they were wealthy, but they they worked for it. So yeah, I'd be like pushing caravans in the snow when I was a teenager and things. So that was like family jobs. My first official non-family job was a um, something world. Oh, I've gone blank. God, I've gone blank when I do these. It's now an Asda got built on it. Homeworld. Homeworld. It was like a department store. And I was like a supervisor in the um, catering. Um, I wasn't full supervisor. I think it just like covered as one. I'm trying to think. It went to me if... They weren't there. Oh, I can't remember. Um, but yeah, it was when I worked in the catering, uh, in the kit, in the restaurant. And I'll never, ever forget coming in one day. And it wasn't my shift, but they were mortified. And they had bathroom displays. And uh, a little child had gone up to the toilet and had a poop in it. And uh, one of my colleagues, they'd, they actually rang the, the people from the restaurant. Nobody else in this whole department store had to come and clear this poo out of this toilet. Needless to say, Homeworld didn't last that long. <laughs> oh, I do make myself laugh. Um, where is my hometown? I live in a village attached to Chorley in Lancashire in England. Favourite qualities in someone? Loyalty. I don't like two-faced. If you can't say it's somebody's face, don't say it. Um... um Having strong values, the way um, they represent themselves, um, if they can listen and not just speak. Uh, Favourite? I've done that one. What were my birthday wishes as a kid? I hope my cake's nice. <laughs> Is there enough jelly? Um, what would you do if we won the lottery? Well, I'm winning the lottery next year. I am going to open a charity. Um, I used to work in charity. And I cannot bear homelessness. I cannot walk past people and they would say, oh, he's a druggie, this is that. That's not my choice to decide. If I see somebody and I have a pound to give or I will give it, um, I like to at least once a year go into a shop and give to so many people like I'll buy a bag of food with a lottery ticket in it and just like a little treat and I go around and I'll find 
some people but i've not actually done that for a couple of years because it, like i not really done my routine went out the window with covid um i would be moving um to portugal and i would also just invest fully into the design aspect of my business um but yeah i'd started my books they actually were the the thing to go to print and then there was a mistake in the book and then it's just not got finished. It actually is a thought of mine every single day um, is my books. So they would be published. And I, regardless of the lottery, I'm still going to do that. Um, but actually this happening to me now has made me take a step back to reprioritise what I need to do. Um, do I like surprises? Mm, I don't get... Given surprises, I would love a surprise. But I'm the person who gives surprises. It doesn't happen to me. <laughs> was that, ugly? that was like an ugly cry face, wasn't it? <laughs> um, am I a coffee or a tea person? I can't drink coffee, even decaf, I can't drink it. I've got thyroid disease, it can affect it. But also because of my autoimmune problems and stuff, coffee affects me. Uh, tea i drink green tea and a peppermint tea tea bag one of each tea bag in the cup and have that multiple times a day um and i have my chamomile tea at night when i was ill last week we thought oh my god i was craving proper property property and i needed sugar in it which wasn't good for me but that's gone now that's passed it was like i was feeding this cold with all sorts um do I have unusual product ideas? Yes, I'm extremely creative. Um, I'm always drawing, planning, um, redesigning my business. Um, what role does your best friend play in your life? That, when I need her, she's there in a flash. Uh, thoughts on marriage? Been married 20 years next year already been together over 20 years and i'm renewing my vows in 2023 did i say next year the year after next it's nearly next year 2024 will be 20 years married and don't know when i'm renewing my vows when i got married the first time it was in gibraltar because i lived in portugal and we drove over it was about six hours some people drove with us who lived there or flew to portugal first to drive or some people flew straight to jib and landed on the smallest runway ever. But used to go to Gibraltar with my real dad and my mum. So I got married in the same hotel I used to go to. Um, and I had this like vision because I didn't know where my dad was back then. And it was like, I just kept wanting to see him. I'd like looking at people. Sad that, isn't it? Just thinking he was going to like, maybe he was there, you know. Um, do I believe in astrology? Hell yes. And that's a whole new vlog. Favourite joke, too rude, so I only know one and it's disgusting, so I'm not going to share it. Kids may be watching. Dream job, working for me, doing what I do and my book, my book's published and the vlogging, I've got so much to give. Like the next thing, the podcast, I'm doing my podcast. Um, best career advice I was ever given, that I ever received... I haven't really been given any, and I don't want to sound like big headed in that sense. I'm not. It's me that gives that advice. Like, it's my life lessons that I've turned me into like telling people more that they can do whatever they want. There's no boundaries. You're your only boundary. Um, you know, your thoughts are precious, so use them wisely. Um, you can, no, nobody can stop you doing anything apart from yourself. You know, can't doesn't exist. You you are the can't if it's you know, you're you're the block. Um and do what you want to do. Like don't you don't have to work for other people. There's so much you can do. Like fill your heart, your soul with um drive and passion and um go for it, yeah. Um 
What steps did I take to get where I am today? I have been through hell in my life. Hell. Um, and me giving that advice a minute ago is me saying through them hard times I've learned, you know, I've done all kinds of jobs. Um, I've studied hard. I've studied so many times. Um, but all them steps actually brought me full circle a little bit to be not afraid to speak out, not afraid to try things and let people see. I don't want to conform to everybody else. Um, so all them mistakes, them life lessons, they were valuable. I, um, I want to fight for all the things I dreamt about, you know, the first time I started writing a book, I was like 21 and then I emigrated and I had kids and I was 20, sorry. And um, yeah, now I can see it all and I can taste it all. I could, I can touch it, you know, it's there, it's in front of me. You know, the only thing that affects me is uh, medical health, health problems, which they're there to make me drive even more. I know they're testing me. Career highlight you've experienced so far. A career highlight was I helped hundreds of people uh, but either in group therapy sessions group or one-to-one -one, where when covid hit we did postnatal um antenatal group sessions i led them groups or i co-facilitated i did both i was a lead facilitator and i gave one-to-one -one therapeutic support and i feel like when i saw some of the feedback i know that I, I am chuffed that I did that because I was going through COVID too, you know, but I didn't have a newborn, but I had my children and putting it in perspective of them parents, like couldn't take the husbands into the, when the children were getting delivered, they were waiting outside in the cold. I heard heartbreaking stuff. So I worked for this charity, Maternal Mental Health, and we were funded by um, the Department uh, of Education. So it was like government funded and I had a huge role to play and I was, I will always be grateful that I got to partake in that. It was long hours. My phone was going at six in the morning till 10 at night because my my personal number had been given out. Um, and we did the, we had all the group sessions in between. So when we weren't doing a group session, we'd be doing, uh, taking phone calls. And that is a career highlight to me. Yeah, I'm proud of what I did. And I'm going to leave it there. And there's, we have to do this again. Um, if anybody wonders where that painting comes from, because I've had a couple of messages before, I actually did that painting. As I said, I did art and design at university because um, I was studying fashion and different aspects of design. Um, there is none for sale on the website at the moment. Um, I've removed any paintings. Um, we were meant to do an art exhibition but COVID stopped it and I've still got ones that are there and they're amazing and they mean something extremely special to me and it would give a lot away. I, um, again, my health aspect has made me go full fold and say, Jill, you, you need to clear that space out to put your studio a bit back in and do your paintings. My work has been sold all over the world. I've had interior designers buy my work many years ago and um, so a couple of years ago, I started selling it again and taking the time because my children are older now. So I'm get, grabbing back time that was needed. I'm still needed, but in different ways. Um, so, yeah, that's one of my paintings. I'm an abstract artist. Um, I go by the name of Tuzani on my artwork. Hence, Tootsie is the nickname for Tuzani, if you didn't know. And Tootsie and then my life, Tootsie life. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I'm in the middle of planning like a reveal thing. Don't, I'm not setting it in stone. I know I've got to do it by the end of the year, but I'm going to figure something out and then maybe do one of these that lasts about half an hour and um, and uh, do something cool. Show you something, let you know something. Uh, so thank you so much for watching my vlog. I am very appreciative uh, that people take the time to watch watch me in my crazy world uh, and uh, I hope everybody has a great fabulous rest of the week please subscribe and please be kind and look after yourselves 
Okay, ciao for now. Bye.